So when I'm done preaching, I'll leave it open for you. Okay? But there's all names here, but most of them are your family members. Charles Francis. Except that one. How do you Butrico. say that? Butrico.
Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I know we're all excited today. Let's carry that in our hearts, but please bring it to your pews as well and have a seat. And when you're ready, we're ready and waiting to begin. Please, just a quick reminder as we're following COVID protocols that there's one pew buffer between and uh, that appears to be the situation I think that everybody's following. So thank you for doing that. Uh, two reasons for your safety and social distancing, but also, and I'll remind you later as well, at communion time, you remain in the pews. We will come to you with the Eucharist, and the only way that we're able to access you is through that buffer pew. So please skip one and move on from there. Thank you very much.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. It is with great joy that we welcome one and all to this Church of the Sacred Heart in South Plainfield, New Jersey. A special welcome to our main celebrant and officiant this day, our Bishop, Reverend Jane, Most Reverend James F. Cecchio, also concelebrating with him from Rockville Center, Most Reverend John Barris, and from the Diocese of Allentown, Most Reverend Bishop Alfred Schlert. Our homilist today is Father James de Phillips. I'm the pastor here, Father John Alvarado. And there's a reason that we're here, that you're all here. Two people have responded to an invitation a long time ago. You know their names, Christina and Robert and they've invited you here, and we're here to celebrate with them. As the Lord has called them, we have all responded. Let's enter with joy, with open hearts, into this celebration together. Welcome, one and all. Thanks, thanks, Father Alvarado. It's certainly our honor and privilege to be here today. I know I speak on behalf of my brother bishops and Father James also, uh, so we're delighted and honored to be a part of this uh, beautiful wedding. Uh, Christina and Robert, you did well, you made it to your seats. So far, so good, huh? It'll all proceed accordingly now, so now it's all easier from now. We're happy to be here. We're, we know how much time you two put into preparing for this wedding, along with your parents, your, your uh, friends and family, uh, but we know how well you prepared for your marriage, too, uh, for the rest of your lives, being a married couple, and how well your families have prepared you for that, too. So makes it even more joyful to be here with you, uh, given all that. So God bless you, uh, know of our love and prayers. Christina and Robert, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your family and friends, as today in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desires and fulfill every one of your prayers. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these your servants, Christina and Robert, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. Sarah got up and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words. Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praised be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam, and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord.
A reading from St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No. In all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew. The head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, 
an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Why do you want to get married in the church? A question I often pose to couples during our marriage preparation meetings. A simple question, yet at the same time an important question on behalf of the church and her ministers. Generally speaking, the answers I receive are simple too and never move to the important. Some of the answers are because my grandparents want us to. The church is beautiful. My sister or brother got married in the church. We went to Catholic school or participated in CCD our whole lives. Although these are cute answers, these are not the answers I look for. Then for fun, sitting across the table, I offer the important like sacrament, intimate, exclusive, indissoluble, communion of life and love. And then I get one of these looks. And I say to myself, oh God, this just went from three meetings to five. However, Christina and Rob, this never happened at our first meeting. And now I'm finally preaching to a couple, to friends, to family, that not only understands what sacrament, intimate, exclusive, indissoluble communion of life and love means, but completely understand what the church asks, but even more intimately, what Jesus Christ asks as faith-filled, committed disciples of Christ and his church, namely, to learn, to grow, and experience Jesus Christ as active witnesses of the faith, and by virtue of this experience, know and live the truth, that not only two become one, but Jesus Christ becomes one with you in this sacred covenant. If anyone is looking for physical evidence that Christina and Rob have done this and continue to do this, please take a look in this sanctuary. Three bishops, two priests, and a partridge in a pear tree. This actually sounds like the beginnings of a joke. So three bishops, two priests, and a couple walked into a bar. We're only missing the rabbi, but here we are. When the importance of the sacrament of marriage is unpacked, one automatically sees the beautiful and the divine. There is beauty and presence of Christ in the sacraments, intimacy, exclusivity, indissolubility, and of course, the communion of life and love found in the I do that the both of you will exchange shortly. Christina and Rob, who are in love, have come to the church and shortly will stand before the altar of God to make vows to each other and to God. They believe that their marriage is not about them, rather about God. And they say, Lord, we belong as a couple to you. We believe that you drew us together for your purposes so that we can fulfill a mission. What is that mission? You both become a living, teaching union of love that expresses to us, that shows us something of the love that God has for us, or using St. Paul's metaphor, that Christ has for his church. In essence, 
you both fulfill your own baptismal dignity of becoming priest and prophet. You embody the true reality of God's eternal love. When we see you, we see God. Now all of this seems poetic, perhaps for some outside the realm of reality. But in fact, the sacrament of matrimony is reality. Indeed, all the sacraments bring about a certain reality that Jesus Christ can only bring about. Hence, why Jesus made it his business to attend a wedding in Cana at Galilee and perform his first sign, the changing of the water into wine. He changes the both of you in this sacrament into the best wine, a fine vino rosso, or more specifically, a fine brunello, which we could all use right about now. Christina and Rob, you both will bring about a reality in a minute or two that has been marginalized, deemed bogus by so many, a reality that is so needed in this world and even for some of us gathered here, a reality that shouts from the rooftops, one can be a young adult in this world that truly believes in Jesus Christ and his church, a reality that celebrates and embraces the true meaning, true meaning of sacrament, intimacy, exclusivity, indissolubility, and communion of life and love. I implore you, never let your guard down. Never allow doubt to creep in, to allow seeds of discord to be sown between you and God and one another. As Pope Francis so eloquently put it, argue as much as you like, even if the plates fly, that is fine. It's the Pope, not me. But never end the day without making peace. Peace with God and peace between one another. Robert, you are taking Maria and Vinny's only girl away from them. Look over your shoulder. <laughs> you have big shoes to fill. Look at Vinny. <laughs> Charlie. Enzo. Big shoes. Christian, not so much. <laughs> we can only live in the hope. I love you, Christian. Christina and Rob, if you think you love each other now, you have not seen anything yet. Fix your hope on heaven. Lead each other there. Receive the full blessings that our faith has to offer. Live your faith intensely. Live your life in union with Christ and his church, and Christ will continue to teach you how to love. He will teach you, Rob, how to be a true husband and a loving father. He will teach you, Christina, how to be a true wife and a loving mother. The both of you have been gifted with wonderful parents and families, and dare I say, many bishops and priests in your lives. We can only go up from here. I love the both of you very much.
Robert and Christina, you have come together into this house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of marriage life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Robert and Christina, have you come here and come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I have. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Robert, take you, Christina, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life. I, Christina, take you, Robert, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Can take this. Take this bucket for a second. Thanks. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Christina, accept this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Robert, accept this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Left hand. Let us humbly place our needs for ourselves and for the whole world before our God of infinite love. 
For Pope Francis, Bishop Cecchio, all bishops and clergy everywhere, that they may lead us to deeper faith in God and a stronger love for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married persons, that they may continue to give, be able to forgive, and find happiness deepen with the passing of each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Robert and Christina, now beginning their life together, that they may have divine assistance at every moment, the constant support of friends, the rich blessing of children, a warm love reaching out to others, and good health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, lonely, discouraged, or oppressed, that they may be strengthened by God's help and aided by their friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Irene Butrico and all who, who are not able to physically be with us today, that God may bless them abundantly and strengthen them with his divine assistance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Charles Francis Butrico, Mary Louise Leeson, Joseph F. Leeson Sr., Mary F. McGonagall, John L. McGonagall Jr., and Patricia J. McGonagall, that they may enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, graciously hear our words of petition so that all things may be accomplished according to your holy will. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him and with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Robert and Christina, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection, they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassionate, merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart and love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he has joined by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage who ask to be strengthened by your blessing send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Christina, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May your husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal, and his joint heir to the life of grace. He may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all May they be blessed with children, blessed with children, 
and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children, and grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The distribution of Holy Communion will take place at this time. Please, the Holy Eucharist will be brought to you in the pews. Do not leave where it is that you're sitting. The priests, the bishops will come to you. If you wish to receive, please either to stand at that time or if you're unable to, just to raise your hand and indicate to us that you will be receiving. For those who join us online, those who may be unable to receive the Eucharist physically this day. We share spiritual communion as we open our hearts to the Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what, is, what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace. Thank you, and again, we congratulate Mr. and Mrs. Robert Leeson, huh?
Just a brief announcement so that you know what it is you're doing right now. Christine and Robert will be taking photos for a little bit, so they will be happy to receive you at the reception coming up later. So just know that this is your time now in between, and they are excited to be able to see and talk to you later. But they're taking this time for family photos, so thank you.